But Gerard LaRousse's Porsche leaving from Warsaw in typical Monty weather is another likely winner. Would it be snow and ice all the way this year? And no one underrated the chances of Sweden's Bjorn Voldegard out this time for a third win. As usual, the rally also started from its finishing point, Monte Carlo, where the weather was warmer. As Henri Grader's Opel disappeared into the night, followed by René Troutman's Citroën SM, all the cars faced three days and nights of winter driving before reaching Monte Carlo again at the end of the long run-in. Sometimes there were snow plows on the way, but all this was only the beginning for the 242 cars that left the night. But the weather on the first leg was kinder than usual. There were few retirements as the cars from all over Europe joined the common route at Gap and drove through the mountains towards Monte Carlo. In car number 21, Lampinen was still going well at La Turbi. Car 91 is an auto Bianchi of the German Kleber team, but the locals still have the edge on roads like these. The run-in is no joyride. As the crews got tireder, the time schedule between controls tightened up. Only 82 cars made it to Monte Carlo unpenalized for a well-earned rest on Monday night. Anderson, car number 11, last year's winner for Alpine. Munari in third place after the first two special stages. Voldegard now leading on Porsche power.
Bernard Darnish, another possible winner for Alpi. Simo Lampinen still backing up the Lancia effort. Jean-Pierre Nicolas in yet another of the 1.6 litre Alpines. the form was beginning to show. The roads were drier than expected on the early special stages, which suited the power of the big two-and-a-half-litre Porsches. Voltegaard and Larousse were well ahead. But the Lanciers, especially Munari, and the Alpine... Time scheduled to shreds. Scores. Next morning on snow and ice, it was a different rally. Danish's Alpine was now the only car clean on the road. And the Kleber radio car told Rally HQ that Voldegaard had left the road and retired. Marie-Claude Beaumont was losing the ladies' prize to Pat Moss. But it was business as usual at the Kleber service point, changing wheels on Kulevine's Autobianchi number 91 and Seltzer's Ford Escort number 89 of the official Kleber team from Germany. Now the fastest growing tyre company in Europe, with one in five French motorists using their tyres and exports to over a hundred countries,
Of the 206 cars that left Monte Carlo the previous morning, only 34 made it back again. Ove Anderson and John Davenport were leading in their Alpine. Rana Altonen in Datsun number no. 5 had lost time and lay 7. La Russe in Porsche number 4 was 5th, but Munari lay 3rd, only one place behind Darniche, still penalty free. At this stage it was Alpine's 1st, 2nd and 4th. Driving with Liz Credin, Pat Moss had a nasty moment or two, especially when an Alfa Romeo went over the edge in front of her Alpine. But she arrived in Monte Carlo 19th with her daughter to greet her and well ahead of her rival, Marie-Claude Beaumont. But there was still the final test, all in the mountains again and all at night. de Turini, 6,000 feet high, was the place for crowds and fireworks. Altonen in the Datsun. Andrue Alpine. Anderson Alpine still leading. A tar change for Anderson at the service point gives the winner of last year's Monty time for perhaps a slightly worried word with his mechanics. <laughs> Anderson and Davenport drive off in good shape, but soon they'll be out with a broken gearbox. Some have time to eat, but not the drivers. The works Alpines are in trouble, though not Pat Moss. She too has time to chat at the service point. Tony Fall as well has something to say. So we're going on, what are we going on? Passes. Are we on? But navigator Mike Wood mentions their Datsun troubles. And uh, we've had to put a new part inside the car and it, we can't pass it in properly. It's all struck and, and one thing and another. Right. We're just barely making it. Two minutes. Munari, soon to take over the lead, isn't talking. So we asked the man from Lancia why his cars were doing so well. Monty against such powerful cars like the Porsche. Well, we have always been quite quick. <laughs> yeah? Last year we won six special stages out of uh, 15. So that was not too bad. But of course we broke the car and so we were out of the game. But if we don't break the car, we're, we think we can always do not too bad. On the Turini again, it's Munari. Jean 
Ragnotti in an opal coma. Darnish again, but now well out of second place. Tony Fall soon to retire with a broken drive shaft. But Henri on Kleber tyres would finish well. By the rally's end at breakfast time next morning, only 24 cars had finished the course. Larousse had done well to finish second in the Porsche. And Altonen is third in the big Datsun. But the biggest cheer of all, almost a riot, is for winner Munari. And naturally, it's champagne for Pat Moss and Liz Krellin. After all, they started from Reims. Outside the Royal Palace, the prize giving with Prince Rainier and Princess Grace to give the rally their official accolade. For Lancia, this is their greatest moment, with Munari first, Lampinen fourth, and Barbezio sixth. And for Munari and navigator Mario Manucci, the peak of their long rally career. For Pat Moss, an eighth ladies' prize is a record that will surely never be broken. Both Alpine, who made the car, and Kleber, who made the tyres, can be justly proud of her success in the Monte of 72.